desire in you and you see a calling. You see yourself, you know, you, you see yourself in, 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 in you know, in a, in a teaching or doing something. And, you know, in your natural mind, you're going, oh, my God, I must be smoking something. But what it is, it's your spirit man showing you what is out there. And there's a ministry for you. And it's not that God has to invent it. It's already in existence. And so your hope, you, get, you lay hold of it with your hope and say, I have a ministry. I said, I, you know, see, you see, one of the big failures of Israel, wasn't it? The reason that many of them died in the wilderness is because they never could lay hold of their hope for the promise. And they always saw themselves through that grasshopper mentality. And, and, when, and when God said, and Paul said in Corinthians, with many of them, God was not well pleased. You know why he was not pleased? Because they kept saying the direct opposite of what he kept saying. He said, you're more than a conqueror. And they kept saying, we can't take the land. God said, I've given you this land. Just go take it. They said, we can't take this land. There's giants. God said, I have made you to, to walk in this land flowing with milk and honey. And they said, we're not able to possess it. God said, go get it. Come on. You see where I'm at? And you know what? You know this grasshopper mentality? You know what it really is? Can I tell you what it is? It's unbelief. Amen. There you go. Fair enough. It's just unbelief. And when it comes, and see, what's the great antidote for unbelief? Faith and hope. <laughs> when it comes to prosperity, you know, and I don't consider myself to be a prosperity preacher because that is not my message. My message is Jesus. But when you serve Jesus, he has destined you to prosper in him. That your soul prospers. That your life, your prosperity simply means to turn out well. How many of you know that the gospel is the greatest message so things turn out well in your life? And I'm not embarrassed to, to, to stand here and tell you that God is for you turning out well. Spirit, soul, and body. So what, what has to happen is you have to lay hold of the prosperity in your hope. You have to lay hold of it for your healing. I mean, you know the devil's going to attack your body. He's going to attack your children's bodies. You have to lay hold of healing and, 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 and hope. Your overall walk with God. You know, it, it, requires, it requires that you, when you look at all these areas, and I could go on. I, I'm just trying to establish something here and by faith make this thing go backward. Look at, look at this. Wow. <laughs> hope. Hope is a favorable and confident expectation. Okay? Now listen, it says, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we have access by faith into all of these things that God has for you and for me. Right? What is access? It's the way you get into something. You got into this building tonight by that access. You get access to all of those things we talked about through Christ. When you came into Jesus, you came into the way of access. Jesus said, I am the door. Your hope should be that when I came into Jesus, that Jesus has a provision for every area in my life. Everything that I need is in him. I don't lack any good thing because it's all in Jesus. Now, faith is a firm persuasion or a conviction. In other words, hope says this is my expectation. Faith is the conviction that this thing is mine. Are you with me? But Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things what? Faith is the sub. The word substance comes from a Greek word, hypostaso. It's the word, it means, it means to stand under. So faith is what stands under your hope. Folks, faith is 
is what gives legs to your hope. Hope is born of God. When God bursts in you, this favorable and confident expectation, faith is you walking it out to see that everything God has said becomes yours because He said it. And I will not be satisfied until I'm seeing it and walking it and seeing everything fulfilled in my life. I am not going to quit. I don't care how old I get, how, how, how circumstances around me get. It doesn't matter what's happening around the world, in my world. If God said it, it's got to be true. Then I just got to keep walking it out because no matter what happens, and it doesn't, no matter what the circumstances look like, God has proven to us that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on. Don't quit. I'm just taking a breath. Come on. <laughs> so let's go back again. So you cannot have faith without a vibrant hope. Now you see why I said that? See, if you have faith, people who say, I have faith, I just don't know if it's ever going to happen. You know what you just did? You just negated everything God has said. Because first of all, you exposed the fact that there's something wrong with your hope. Because what is hope? <laughs> it's a confident expectation. Hope is a confident expectation. That if, therefore, if God said it, it's true. So, if I have faith, then I have to have a vibrant hope. Are you, you, I know I'm repeating it, but I'm going to keep repeating it till you get it. And you can't have a vibrant hope without faith. See, to say, well, I, I have expectation, and then not walk it out. There's something wrong then with your faith and your hope. For example, when I, when, when I, when I wrote this statement here, Hope is the realization that everything God has promised is already in existence. See, that's why my hope wraps itself around. For example, let, let's just use that area of, of, of prosperity. So in, in the realization that God has promised me a, a, a life of prospering, spirit, soul, I would that you prosper even as your soul prospers. So God has, God has a life of prosperity for me. But you see, it's not enough just to have the realization of it. Now, when I add my faith to it, faith is me walking it out. So you know what I do because of my faith? I realize that in my faith, there are certain principles that govern this whole realm. You with me? For example, in the realm of giving. The Bible says, give and it shall be. The, the Bible talks about the fact that if you, as you... So, so shall you also agree. So if, if, if I have hope in this area of prosperity, then my faith is going gonna, is gonna di to dictate the governing principles of my life, and I'm going to become a giver. Because I realize that as I'm walking out the principles of God in giving, that God has promised to bless those who are obedient in this area. Are you with me? Don't worry, I'm not taking up an offering. I'm not trying, I don't want your money. And I'm here to tell you something, God doesn't need your money. But what he's, and, and people go, oh, you know, because here's now when you preachers go off on this tithing and giving and all of this because you want my money. I, I, I don't want your money. God doesn't want your money. What he wants is your obedience in faith because that, that unleashes God to be able to do what He said He would do because now you're walking in faith. Woo. See, if you're not tithing and giving, don't tell me you're a faith man. <laughs> well, but Brother Mike, I can't afford to tithe. I, I, excuse me, 